Coffee is proudly sponsored by Santa Barbara Bowls Education Outreach. Welcome to Backbeat, a show highlighting people that make a difference using music in our very own community. I'm Shannon, and we tape our show right here at Playback Recording Studio, a cutting-edge recording facility for film, television, and music production located in the beautiful city of Santa Barbara. Coming up, the love of engineering and the passion for music have taken Seymour Duncan and Kathy Carter from a small loft repairing guitars to what it is today. Now, celebrating 35 years, the Seymour Duncan Company is the largest maker of guitar pickups in the world. We meet up with Seymour Duncan and find out what makes his company so unique and why the employees get their groove on a couple times a day. Also, we take a tour to see how guitar pickups are made and visit the Seymour Duncan Custom Shop, where they build guitar pickups for rockers like Eddie Van Halen and ZZ Top. Name a rock band and they probably play with a Seymour Duncan pickup. Plus, many people may not know this, but Seymour Duncan started out playing in a band and is an accomplished guitarist. Seymour and his band will even play for us at the end of the show. So keep it here and keep it loud. We'll be right back. Santa Barbara Bulls Education Outreach provides much needed support for music and performing arts events and programs for area students. One dollar of every ticket sold to bowl events helps to fund arts education throughout Santa Barbara County. A big thanks to Playback Recording Studio for supplying the location for Backbeat. Playback Recording Studio is a cutting edge recording facility for film, television, and music production. Evan, creating the tone that sets you apart. What exactly does that mean to all of us who aren't in the guitar pickup world? Mm, great question, Shannon. <laughs> See, for a lot of guitar players, they're not satisfied with the generic tone that comes with stock guitars. Not to say that there's anything wrong with stock pickups, but they might not be the right pickup for the guitarist. Maybe the guitarist wants more output. Maybe they want more high-end, more harmonics, or maybe they want to emulate the sound of an artist that they particularly admire. Well, that's why at Seymour Duncan, we make hundreds of different pickup models so that all guitar players can have the tone that sets them apart. Wow, that's way more in depth than I ever would have thought, thank you. And creating the tone that sets you apart. That statement also represents Seymour's passion for business, his employees, the community, and as a guitarist. So let's find out how it all got started. Around 1976, uh, I had moved here from England and um, I was very, you know, I was a guitar player doing sessions over there, working and uh, doing a lot of guitar repair. I was working at the Fender Soundhouse at the time in London. So when I came over uh, recording, we were staying in Topanga, California, Topanga Canyon, and um, I uh, saw this guy and he says, oh, you know, you want to play music? So we had a little, little band and everything. So one day we were out riding our horses and uh, we stopped at a ice cream shop and then I met uh, this uh, lady Kathy Carter and uh, we you know she liked what my ideas about manufacturing and stuff and she was the real brains with the uh, the the business side of it eventually we moved up to Santa Barbara and then we started doing uh, a lot of uh, uh, repair work and then I was working at a store called Jensen Music and I was their repairman in the back room you know and then uh, from there, we just started uh, making a lot of, uh, we, we were doing rewinds, uh, repairing old pickups from many of the guitar players out there. And we were doing stuff for like Joe Walsh and you know, the Eagle guys and, and um, a lot of guys, clients that I had from England, were, you know, Peter Townsend, we were the late Gary Moore, who just passed away. We were doing a lot of repair work for him and uh, uh, my old friends Ruby Buchanan and Jerry McGee, he was in a band, uh, The Ventures. So for me, I just had a real passion and every pickup that I worked on, I would uh, uh, write all the specs to. So we have a real good library of um, all the, the whole world market of whatever pickup is out there. You know, we, we've done it or worked with it. And it's funny too, a lot of guys don't know I'm even a guitar player. You know, they think like Seymour Duncan, Procter & Gamble or something, you know. And, but, you know, I'm a player and I love it and I've, I've worked with so many great people, you know, over the years, playing on stage with them and done shows with them. And I've played with Dwayne Eddy, I've played with Adrian Ballou from the Talking Heads and David Bowie's band and it's just so many great guitar players. 
I've been on stage with uh, Les Paul. I played with uh, Gatemouth Brown. I mean, just so many great people over the years. I mean, hundreds of them. One day I get this call and it's James Taylor. And he says, Seymour, I have one of your guitars, you know, and I just love it. And, you know, I love the neck on it and everything. And everybody I talk to, I get something from, you know, like their sound or their tone or whatever the problem they're having or how to fix the guitar. I've learned so much from other people. And so for me, you know, it, it's worth a million dollars, you know. So I'm proud of that. Paul, you're lucky enough to be able to work at Seymour Duncan. What's one thing that you find really unique about working in the office? Well, for me, the most unique thing is that we're actually building product right here in Santa Barbara. We have a workforce of about 80 employees mm -hmm. that manufacture these products, and it's a product um, unlike most of our products in today's society, we throw them away when we're done. <laughs> These products last hundreds of years, mm -hmm. and there's a connection through music um, that is, it's, it's magical. And, right. you know, we try to make that connection with the employees at work right. um, that are working on them. So you build a product that lasts, which is so rare, and you have lots of fun. And speaking of fun, what is with all that dancing? That's just one, one of the many skills you need at Seymour Duncan. So let's find out what it's like to work there. For me, it, it's been a, uh, a passion, a hobby, growing up, being, loving guitar and working on guitars and then turning it into a business. And then the, the, the great thing for me is being able to uh, have the employees and have them work here and grow up and have families and to be able to support them, you know, and it's just a good feeling. Even on the production floor, everybody knows that if it, there is a problem that they can, you know, that they have, could be medical, could be anything, Seymour Duncan is there to, you know, to really back them up. And this is what makes a really great environment to work for. And if we're all happy, we make happy pickups and happy pickups make happy music, you know. But it, it's all it's all the guys behind me that are part of what I do. You know, they're 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 my uh, uh, inspiration. You know, to want to do this every day. They understand the problem that we have, and also it's very flexible in here. Uh, when you work in the same place for 31 years, you can see it like an MTV and then stuff like that. You can see it a difference because now we have our our, our logo into all the pickups. I'll enjoy seeing that and thinking about I built some of that stuff. And you know, we did the uh, Discovery TV show many years ago, about six years ago, five, six years ago, called Big. And we built the world's largest guitar, electric guitar. And we made the pickup here and we had all the employees being involved with it. So it was a great, fun thing for them too to see part of their self because they came through the factory and the employees were on TV and everything. So it was really neat. There's a lot of love that goes into building the product, um, and um, and we try to make the environment, you know, kind of a fun place to work. We can either put some cumbia, or we can put some John Fogarty, or we can put some, you know, I mean, you name it. We we have danced to to everything. It started off as just doing stretches and things because we do a lot of repetitive motion. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a music company too, so the idea was we would kind of introduce music into that routine to kind of make a connection to what they were doing, but we also found it wasn't really planned that way, but it had such a benefit because for five minutes in the morning and the afternoon, people get to stop what they're doing and they have fun. It helped us to stretch our muscles. Fun and they're still smiling and we like it like that because it's different. From both Seymour and Kathy, you know, their values, you know, they're very compassionate people. They care about the employees. They have a moral system where, you know, it's not just business. You know, they, it, it's a family. And, and, and that means a lot to, to everybody here. Yeah. Here's a quick 101 of a guitar pickup and how it works. These pickups are actually magnets and a wrap coil with thousands of turns of wire called a bobbin. The job of the pickup is to convert vibration of the strings into an electrical signal that can be sent to an amplifier. The sound or tone of the pickup can vary by changing the strength of the magnets, more turns of the wire, and the size of the wire. Pickup placement can also make a big difference along with how many pickups are used on the guitar. 
So I got a chance to listen to Seymour's new CD. Can you share with us how it was that you came about being able to produce it for him? Absolutely. Seymour and I have been friends for 30 years, and uh, I saw him at a NAMM show, and mm -hmm. he uh, told me that he had acquired a Pro Tools system, a recording system, and I offered to go and set it up for him. And uh, we ended up doing that. And in the course of setting it up, we ended up with a, a little song that we put together <laughs> just to show him what every element of the system did. And uh, on the way home, I got a call from Seymour, and he said, Dougie, I want you to produce my, new, my CD. <laughs> and uh, I was very excited about that. And uh, we ended up doing it, and, and it turned out fantastic. On the same token, it's amazing to me how much handwork Seymour Duncan puts into the making of guitar pickups. So come with me as we take a sneak peek and find out how they're really made. Single coil pickups start their life uh, with a bobbin that is made out of a material called Forbon. And we take a top piece of Forbon and a bottom piece of Forbon and we hold them together with six pole pieces, each of which is a magnet. Then the pickup is, or I should say the bobbin, is ready to get wound. We wind a very thin strand of copper wire thousands of times around the bobbin. Um, we have various different types of winding machines in the factory. The oldest and one of the most interesting is the Green Monster. That's the Lisona Model 102. This is the winding machine that Gibson used in their Kalamazoo, Michigan factory from the late 1940s up until the late 1970s when we purchased it. We use this machine to wind our vintage Gibson replica pickups. So for instance, when you buy the Seymour Duncan 59 model, which is one of our most popular pickups, it's actually wound on the same machine that was winding pickups in Gibson's factory in 1959. Most of the winding, however, happens on more modern machines like these computer numerical control machines. These have programs which account for the number of turns, the speed, the angle, how fast the uh, windings are distributed on the bobbin, all the factors that go into determining the sound of the pickup. After the bobbins come off of the winding machines, it's basically a bobbin with a hair thin wire uh, on either end and it needs to get hooked up. And a lot of what you see here in the production floor is what we call hookup or pigtailing, where you're taking those hair thin wires and you're connecting them to bigger wires. Some of the bigger wires are used in the internal construction of the pickup, and some are the wires that will actually be trailing off the pickup, and the end user will, or the repair person, will install them in the guitar. And finally, when you get to uh, the end of the pigtailing and hookup area, the pickups take a bath. They take a bath in a molten mix of paraffin and beeswax. But it's not just a regular dipping in wax. This is a vacuum chamber. And it causes a very strong vacuum to be created and causes the wax to permeate all the way to the very center of the pickup. After the pickups come out of the wax, they need to have the excess wax taken off. And then the uh, pickups are pretty much ready for the final quality control inspection. Once everything checks out, specs out, then the pickups go over to the packaging area. And that's the life of a pickup here at Seymour Duncan. Tom here is going to play with Seymour Duncan and his band, and I want to know how was it that you got wrangled into doing this? Or should I say lucky enough to be here tonight? Yeah, it's lucky enough to do this. <laughs> I, agree. Uh, I play with Flatfoot Joe, which is a band, uh, Paul Davis, operations manager at Seymour Duncan. We're longtime friends. We play music together. and. Uh, Seymour uh, just happened to be interested in, in doing some music with us and so uh, we've done a couple performances and gotten together and done some music and uh, Seymour is an amazing player, very creative. Uh, the person that also spends so much time doing all the technological things to the guitar in <laughs> itself has a vast feeling for how to use the guitar and so his emotional playing and the things that he does, he always has a little trick up his sleeve. It's been a real treat so far being playing with him so I'm really enjoying it. Well we're really excited to have you tonight and we've heard all about the emotional side of it and guitar pickups but one thing that we haven't found out about is how to make a guitar pickup look old. To me, it's called vintage. And trust me, Eddie Van Halen really wanted one. So check out the Seymour Duncan custom shop and what Eddie wanted. So with us, you know, we're doing so many cool projects from, uh, we did all the Eddie Van Halen uh, Frankenstein guitars. We did uh, David Gilmore, his Blackie. Uh, 
We're currently doing the George Harrison guitar, which I'm very proud of. I mean, that's a, it's a hard instrument. It's very well worn. We're trying to replicate and duplicate all the wear marks of the original pickups. You know, Eddie Van Halen brought his guitar in here about three years ago for us to duplicate the pickups on his Frankenstein guitar. You know, and one of the good things is that besides that they wanted the, the pickup to be as relic as it is right now, but with the tone that it was back in 1978, when we talk about two different techniques, because on this one, we needed to ace the different way of playing that Eddie does. A way to ace the, the screws and the studs and the bottom plate and everything is different than the one I'm aging for George Harrison, which is with a cover, different type of plane, different aging on different parts. And to make these pickups, sometimes on this one, I only had a picture to work with. With the pickup from Eddie, it was a little easier. I had pictures to work with, pictures that Seymour took in here while Eddie was here in the company with me. He was able to spend two days here with us at the same time that we needed to ace and he approved everything that we had done for him. And I have I came up with so many aging processes of how to make things look old. So for us in the antiquities, which is my my little my nest egg, my little baby that I, I take care of, and. Uh, so I sign every pickup that goes out, I sign every one. I mean, it's really a neat thing, you know, we worked with U2, you know, and from the Beach Boys and, and so many of the great session players. And it's so neat to be a part of that, you know, they're extensions of Seymour Duncan here, you know, we, we consider them part of our family and uh, we have so many great clientele. You can see, you know, from Peter Frampton and Gloria Estevan and Don Felder from the Eagles and Joe Walsh. We've worked with the ACDC, I mean, from, and ZZ Top. I mean, we've done so much for Billy Gibbons and ZZ Top band and stuff, you know. And uh, Peter Frampton calls MJ all the time and says, oh, I got a new project, you know, and, or Billy will call. And Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top, he'll come into Santa Barbara here and we'll go out to, he loves Mexican food, so we'll go out to the local restaurant, you know. When uh, musicians like Billy Gibbons, Steve Miller, Los Lobos had, you know, stopped the show, you know, and he would dedicate a song to me. I believe it's been, it's been wonderful when they take the moment to say, thanks MJ for the great tone. But there was one who usually topped them all, you know. We went to Tiberi Corporation, and, uh, and I believe it was Massive Attack. And we were at the show, and when we arrived at the show, they have my initials on the bass um, amp, you know, with fluorescent, you know, um, tape. And it was great to see my name right on the stage. It was, you know, it was incredible. And we recently did the uh, Seymour Duncan 35 uh, guitar, which is a replica of my old Telly Gibb, and we started out with 35 of them which I'm very proud of, and uh, uh, we gave the first one to Jeff Beck uh, last week down in, when he was playing in Pomona at a show down there. And he's always been my main guitar guy gro just growing up, and it's important for me to put something I made in my guitar and take it out and play it and let other people hear it, which is so cool, you know, and to be able to do that, you know, and I couldn't ask for anything better, you know, than have your own design guitar with Fender and they're always sending me parts so I can always put together some little Frankenstein guitars and everything. So I've been very lucky in that respect, you know. I'm so cool about that, you know. And uh, I'm proud of it and proud to be, uh, call myself a guitarist. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And first, I'd like to congratulate you on 35 years in the business. That's so exciting. Very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we know that you gave your first of 35 Seymour Duncan Anniversary Edition guitars to Jeff Beck. Yep. I want to know why, out of all the musicians that use your guitar pickups, why Jeff Beck? Jeff has always been uh, such an influence to me. I've known him for a long time. We, we like hot rods, we like guitars, mm -hmm. and um, I was very lucky for him to give me his original Yardbirds guitar and uh, from uh, uh, back in 1965. And then I made him a guitar in 1973 that he used on the Blow by Blow album and he got his first album and his first uh, Grammy. So for me that was very exciting to be able to do that. 
and it was my first uh, JB model pickup that I actually made too. And it was a guitar I called the originally called the Telly Gib, mm -hmm. but now I call it the Seymour Duncan 35. And it was just like this that I gave to Jeff. So wow. I'm very proud of it. And uh, to me, he he deserves it. Out of all the guitar players I've known over the years, he's the guitar player's guitarist. He's He's fantastic. Thank you again, <laughs> Seymour. And we won't keep you waiting any longer. I'd like to introduce the Seymour Duncan Band playing McGriff. Well, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the show. And please remember to support music and musicians in our community. See you next time on Backbeat. A big thanks to Playback Recording Studio for supplying the location for Backbeat. Playback Recording Studio is a cutting edge recording facility for film, television, and music production. If you would like to be on Backbeat or have any ideas or interesting stories of people that make a difference in our community by using music, please go to our Facebook page and search SB Backbeat.